Ask any hospital pharmacist and they'll tell you their supply of the anesthesiology drug lidocaine is inconsistent and they worry about having to reschedule surgery if they can't get it. The manufacturers and prime wholesalers are often out of it. And when hospital pharmacists go to the secondary market, it sometimes costs 500% over the list price to get it. I trained a hospital pharmacist in West Virginia on the DSCSA, and he said he paid 500% markup on some lidocaine and wondered, where has this really been? Who's got the supply of lidocaine that's making so much money, and why can't I get it at a reasonable price? There have been some manufacturing issues, and the makers haven't been raising their prices, so who's making that 500% markup? Using his newfound traceability knowledge, this hospital pharmacist went back to a gray market wholesaler that sold him two cases of a lidocaine product just last year, and he asked him for the transaction history. I've redacted it a lot here to avoid naming companies, but you can see after the first sale from the manufacturer to one of the major primes that's a household name, it went straight from there to a small community pharmacy in Texas. This doesn't really make a lot of sense, as that community pharmacy doesn't really have much use for lidocaine. And they sold it right away. So this isn't a we bought too much and we're getting rid of excess overstock situation. They sold it immediately to a really large gray market wholesaler in Texas that same day. And then went immediately to a small regional gray marketer who is only licensed in two states, including West Virginia, and then to the hospital pharmacy that I told you about. There's a lot of people who aren't villains here. It certainly isn't the manufacturers. This isn't a patented medication or a sole source generic situation. And I asked a pharmacy colleague in Texas about why a small pharmacy would be flipping this. And she said, little pharmacies have contractual obligations to their prime wholesalers to buy a certain ratio of both branded and unbranded medications. Lidocaine, which has been around since the 70s, may help even out that ratio to offset the cost of branded medications they per purchase. Selling it for a profit is one way to also offset the fact that PBMs make them dispense other medicines at a loss. And I'm sure the gray market wholesalers will certainly tell you they provide a valuable service. But in this situation, they kind of look more like profiteering middlemen, more like pharmacy benefit managers to me. And one final thought. If you have any reason to be suspicious about a short supply medicine, that take some time to check it out. It's not just good practice, but it's a legal obligation under the DSCSA. If you're unfamiliar about how to use the DSCSA to conduct an investigation, all the major pharmacy organizations have collaborated on a website that explains your obligations at the web address dscsa.pharmacy. And at PSM's website, we have a whole page about what the DSCSA means for pharmacists and training you what your obligations are. To learn more, go to this URL on our website.